Golden State's increased physicality forced Boston into 19 turnovers, resulting in 33 Warrior points. That was the deciding factor in Game 2, but the officials can't let Draymond get in their heads like he did to Boston, as Dray himself even admitted post-game he's been getting some special treatment. How concerned were you that they may have given you a second technical when you and Jalen Brown were down on the floor? Not at all. Word? Um, I mean, so you I'm are Draymond Green. Me, you said I, they treat I, you differently. I'm saying they necessarily treat me different. I've earned differential treatment and I enjoy that. Don't get me wrong, the Warriors earned this blowout win to even the finals at a game apiece, but the refs refusing to eject Draymond Green, regardless of how much trash he spoke to them, then giving a tech to Boston coach Ime Udoka for practically nothing, wasn't a good look for the NBA. Since Zach Zarba and Tony Brothers being unable to control the game distracted us from another brilliant showing from two-way Steph, some stellar defense from Andrew Wiggins on Jason Tatum, plus Kevon Looney, Gary Payton II, and Otto Porter Jr. being stars in their roles, this video breaks down all that and more. Before continuing, only 11.4% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please drop a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepFlowHoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Many people can't stand him, but personally, I have respect for how Draymond Green lays everything out there when he steps on the court. From a neutral Raptor fan's perspective, whose team is division rivals with Boston, my problem is with the refs, who like the Celtics, allowed Green to get under their skin. I gave credit to Dre for getting in his opponent's head in this video, go watch that after this, but where I draw the line is when officials are also changing the way they perform based off the trash talk from a certain player. For either team, whether it's the players, coaches, or fans, I think the refs visibly favoring someone or letting technical foul material fly as a way of ruining the game. The losing team is left feeling short-handed, while the winning team hears nothing but excuses from the other team's fan base. That's why the game won refs, or anyone but Zarba and brothers, should be assigned for the remainder of the finals. But again, Boston fans can blame the refs all they want. That doesn't explain the excessive possessions where the Warriors increased their ball pressure, played solid defense without fouling, and bothered and relentlessly turned over the Celtic ball handlers, changing the pace of the game. For that happening, you can look to multiple factors, the first of which is the Celtics' general complacency, which most detrimentally resulted in lazy passing reads out of doubles. Secondly, it was how Golden State switched up their approach on Jason Tatum midway through the game. The opening quarter plus saw the Celtics' go-to guy drain five threes and post 21 points, spamming his patented sidestep deep range triple and easily getting to his hotspots, then shooting over the top of much smaller defenders with his nine foot tall release point. But starting in the second and near the end of the first half, there was an insistence from Golden State's defense to have bigger defenders on Tatum at all times. Here, the near seven footer Nemanja Bialica keeps his feet moving and beautifully recovers despite getting crossed up, getting right back to go straight up and force Tatum into the miss. Again, Nemi switches onto Tatum right here, crowding his airspace, and even with a shifty stop on a dime from Tatum, still Bielitsa nicely contests, going straight up yet again. Another switch sees Draymond speed Jason up by face guarding him at half court. That leads to a rushed pass to the corner, which Curry intercepts. And watch the footwork and unteachable reactions from Green to not be fooled by a single one of these dribble combos and get right up underneath Tatum a perfectly fundamental contest without fouling. Whether it was big, yet mobile defenders like Bielitsa, Green, or my fellow Torontonian Andrew Wiggins, who right here forces Jason to drive by pressing up, leading into some great strong side help from Thompson, and then nearly blocks this shot from the corner, making the change to not allow Tatum to get into his dribbling rhythm by applying more pressure and having bulkier stoppers switch onto him, stagnated JT's momentum throughout the course of Game 2. After that 21-point clinic in the first half, those Steve Kerr adjustments, along with the increased intensity from his rotation, held Jason to just 7 points the rest of the way. We'll have to save a further film room breakdown on the defense from Maple Jordan in another video, whether it's after a game in these finals or down the road in the offseason, but the numbers prove that Andrew's been an elite wing stopper thus far in 2022's finals. When guarded by Andrew Wiggins in this series so far in 15 minutes of matchup time, 
Jason Tatum scored just 13 points on 5 for 15 shooting, equating to just 33%. We'll see if Air Canada can keep up those clamps or if JT bounces back. Meanwhile, on the defense that gave Kevin Durant nightmares in the first round, leading to a sweep of his Brooklyn Nets, the current Finals MVP favorite in Stephen Curry is averaging 32 points per game against these Boston Celtics as the series shifts to Beantown for a crucial Game 3. I missed out on a few of Steph's Game 2 plays in my film room breakdown on his defense yesterday, but watch how he confidently just leaves Derek White in this pick and pop reaching in to get all ball as Jason tries to sell the contact. Here, he closes out on Smart, bothers the DPOY on his baseline drive, which leads Marcus right into the help from Andrew Wiggins, gluing himself to the quick Peyton Pritchard, who then kicks it out to Grant Williams. Curry then runs the Dark Knight off the three-point line and gets the deflection. Unafraid as Tatum tries to expose him, Curry gets whistled for the foul right here, but this just displays how his on-ball pressure is able to guide Celtic attackers right into the help. I recommend you go check out yesterday's video for a few more of Steph's standout defensive plays from Game 2. As I've said, Curry's clamps are such an underrated ability of his. The man's steadily improved strength and footwork make him a bona fide top-notch guard defender. President Bob Meyer spoke on Steph Tuesday, saying, It's so sad we have to defend him. I don't know what he has to continue to prove. I don't know what it is about him that causes people to fail to recognize what he's doing out there. End quote. What happens in Game 3 and why? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Boston Haltain, who says Curry's most underrated quality is definitely his leadership. People do realize that he's a good leader, but I really think he's one of the best that the league has ever seen. Along with Draymond, Curry has been one of the reasons the Warriors feel as though they can win, even when they're down double digits. He helps to get people on the same page, and his winning spirit rubs off on his peers. Draymond gets a lot of the well-deserved credit for his role as the team's leader, but Steph has also been a vital part of the Dove's leadership, with his ability to get good teammates on the same page, with his encouragement, and how he gets his teammates' heads in the right place, even when they're down. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. D-Flow signing off.